Okay, this is chapter 13's um, neural tissue or the nervous system um, overview uh, lecture. So it's chapter 13's outline. Hopefully you have that in front of you. Um, let's just take a quick look at our picture here. So the quote you see on this page, there's an estimated 100 billion neurons in your brain and each of them have about a thousand connections to other neurons. That's something I heard on uh, NPR when I was driving. Uh, they were talking to a neurobiologist, and I uh, remember that because it's such a mind-blowing figure. <clears throat> and to think about the differences in brains and the differences in people, uh, your personalities and the different memories that you have really boil down to these connections that you have from one neuron to another neuron. And if you think about just how many different pathways you can mathematically come up with, that's probably going to be at the anatomical heart of what makes uh, different personalities different, what makes different memories different, um, is just these interconnections uh, are forged in a different, you know, different ways. Um, what you see here is the highlighted bodies or somas of a, the neurons here. You see a really long axon leaving the neuron body. And then there's another population of neuron cell bodies up here. So you're looking at two layers of neurons highlighted, uh, connected by these uh, interconnecting processes, these axons. All right, so let's get started with just the um, how do we divide the nervous system up. So um, very simply, there is a central nervous system and a peripheral nervous system. So the central nervous system is just what is in gray in this picture. It's just the brain and just the spinal cord nothing else okay the central nervous system is brain and spinal cord um, the brain is responsible for um, countless processes it's you know integrating information coming in from your body uh, the sensory information is coming from your body it's planning what to do it's coordinating responses to the stimuli coming in and provides control over lots and lots of systems in the body um, the peripheral nervous system Okay, in the spinal cord, let's talk about the spinal cord. Spinal cord is a conduit. So this is a way that the impulses coming in from the periphery, so the peripheral nervous system is the nerves that are running through the rest of your body. So when you hear the word nerve, uh, you're talking about something in the peripheral nervous system. So, so far we've learned about the sciatic nerve, for example, or the median nerve, which is in carpal tunnel syndrome. Uh, that is what is, uh... <clears throat> okay, so nerves are, are in the periphery. The spinal cord is the structure that is going to be the relay station, right? So it's going to take information coming from your extremities, from coming from your body. It's going to go into the spinal cord, and the spinal cord is going to take that information to the brain. Anything leaving the brain is going to travel down the spinal cord and then into a nerve. So the spinal cord is a conduit. It conducts information up and down to the brain and away from the brain. Um, the peripheral nervous system, okay, let's talk about that. There, you know, I said nerves. So there are cranial nerves and there are spinal nerves. Cranial nerves come off the brain itself and they go to your head and they go to your neck and one of them goes down into your um, abdomen and your thorax. Spinal nerves are the nerves that come off of your spinal cord. So we're going to talk about spinal nerves in the spinal um Cord chapter which is chapter 14 and then the cranial nerves are covered in chapter 16 all right so um, then there are subdivisions of the peripheral nervous system there's an autonomic nervous system and there's a somatic nervous system so I like to think of the word automatic for autonomic um, so these are the um, systems that you cannot consciously control so if you look at your outline these are involuntary uh, parts of your body so you're um, involuntary muscles, right? Cardiac muscle, um, your visceral muscle, the smooth muscle is under autonomic control. Your glands are under autonomic control. Like when you sweat or when you produce a hormone, like that, you don't control that um, voluntarily. So those are under automatic or autonomic nervous system control. And then that itself is divided into two subdivisions, which is the sympathetic and parasympathetic divisions. I'll talk about that in just a second. And then the somatic nervous system, soma means body. And the somatic nervous system um, is also kind of think of it as the voluntary part of your body. Well, what is voluntary? What can you voluntarily control? And um, 
if you really think about it, you know, you, the only physical thing you can control are your skeletal muscles. There's nothing else you physically can control. You can control your thoughts, but that's not like a physical aspect of your body. So when you talk about the somatic nervous system, you're talking about skeletal muscle. Okay. So um, let's look at the uh, some basic terms here. So uh, just so you guys have the information, sensory information or sensory input is going to be anything coming um, into the brain from your body. Um, it can be coming from your skin, touch, itch, uh, it could be pain, it could be temperature, it could be coming from your eyes or your ears, some kind of sense. Uh, it could be stretch of your muscles, stretch of your tendons. Whatever that sensory information is, right, it's coming from your body, it's going to be incoming to the brain. So the brain receives sensory information or sensory input. The brain will integrate that information and then out from the brain, any messages, right? And when I, when I say messages, I mean action potentials or um, impulses leaving the brain, that's gonna be some kind of motor, okay, output. So motor commands can include going to skeletal muscle um, or it can include going to any of those smooth muscles, cardiac muscle glands, things like that that we can't control. So the terms you want to be familiar with is sensory is always going to go into the brain. So it's sensory input. Motor is always going to leave the brain. Uh, so it's motor output. Okay. So um, there are some uh, terms here just before we move on. Receptors are specialized nerve endings. Okay. Or I should say neuron cell endings. They are going to um, respond to very specific stimuli. We're going to go over specific stimuli uh, or specific receptors um, in a little bit. It's actually in the senses chapter. Then there's a term effector. Uh, effectors are parts of your body that respond. They're going to be on the end of that motor command. So let's go back up here, right? So the motor output leaving your brain and traveling down your spinal cord will go to an effector. So this can be a muscle or it can be a gland. Okay, so you see muscle and gland or other specialized cell. All right, reflexes, we'll talk about this in chapter 14. And these are some words that we'll just get to when we talk about them in the uh, chapter. So we've already talked about some of these, you know, voluntary, involuntary. You guys know for sure, action potential. Uh, you probably already are aware of what subconscious means, right? So you're not, you're not consciously aware of these things going on in your brain, things that you operate on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and then we'll talk about somatic and visceral. Okay, so this is the uh, chart. We're going to spend some time here. And in class, I would actually have you guys draw this out, um, but I don't have that luxury right now. So let's just take a look and go through this step by step. So these are the receptors that are found in your body, okay? We're going to go in this U shape, you know, upside down U fashion. So we're going to start here with receptors, go up, go around, and come down. So what kind of receptors do you have in your body? Um, so receptors, again, are these specialized uh, neuron endings, and they can detect very, very specific stimuli. Um, so you have a receptor for stretch. You have a separate receptor for temperature. You have a separate receptor for um, the direction that your hair moves. You have a separate receptor for pressure, right? So we've talked about some receptors in the skin. You also have receptors, you know, throughout the body. But anyways, so there are categories. Special senses are in the head, basically. So if you look at what is considered a special sense, smell, taste, vision, balance, and hearing. Balance and hearing are in your ear. Vision is the eye, taste and smell, nose and mouth. So these are uh, actually in chapter 18, and I'll go over those. There's a whole chapter on special senses, so we're going to sort of ignore those for now. And then there are senses called visceral senses. So what is a visceral sense? So I want you guys to make a note that visceral refers to inside your body cavities. So think about your body cavities. You had your thoracic cavity, and then you had your abdominal pelvic cavity, right? So what's inside? Of those cavities. They're your organs, and your organs, remember, are called viscera. So what kind of, um, so you're going to have these receptors monitoring your organs, right? So cardiovascular, respiratory, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So these are going to be organ senses, right? And then what's a somatic sense then? 
So somatic sense is going to be outside a body cavity. So if you think about what is outside my thoracic cavity and my abdominal pelvic cavity, it's going to be your, your bones, right? Your skeletal system, your muscles are outside your, um, I, I should say skeletal muscle is outside that, uh, your joints, your skin, right? And so anything coming from that part of your body is considered a somatic sense. So let's do an example. What could be an example of viscery sense, sorry, visceral sense, uh, maybe that your stomach is stretched so full because you had a huge dinner, right? So that's a visceral sense. What's a somatic sense? Maybe you scraped yourself on uh, the pavement when you took a fall and you, you hurt your skin, right? That's a somatic sense, that pain from your skin. All right, so all of these senses are coming in to your brain, right? So they're gonna travel through your spinal cord, they're gonna to go to the brain and enter the central nervous system. How do they do that? Well, they use the peripheral nervous system, they use your nerves to do that, right? So they go through the peripheral nervous system and they're going to enter the central nervous system. Now, I want you guys to know two words that mean the same thing. Sensory information is the same as afferent signals or afferent information. So the word sensory is the same as afferent. Okay, so um, I could say that your stomach, you, the feel the stretch of your stomach wall is an afferent sense, okay? An afferent visceral sense to be more specific. Okay, so afferent signals or sensory information always come into your central nervous system, right? Your brain is gonna process all that electrical activity coming in and then the brain will have some output, right? So remember we use the word motor for any output signals coming from the brain. And I want you guys to know that the word efferent is the same. So the efferent signals or efferent uh, information is the same as motor commands or motor information. Motor is the same as efferent. So here we go. So out comes some efferent information, right? Um, and we can choose two pathways to have, okay? So remember the peripheral nervous system, we can break it up into the somatic system or the autonomic. Remember the word automa automatic. So let's choose the easier route for now. If we want to move a skeletal muscle, that's going to be part of our somatic nervous system, right? Because this is the part that's voluntary and this autonomic or automatic was involuntary. So if, uh, let's say you felt um, an ant crawl on your arm and you want to flick the ant off your arm, right? So that's gonna be a somatic sense, that sensation coming from your skin traveling up. The motor information is gonna go through the somatic nervous system to your voluntary skeletal muscle so you can move the ant off your arm. Another route we can choose, okay, is the autonomic nervous system. So remember the autonomic ner nervous system, this is gonna control all the things that are automatic. So let's drop down and look at what are we controlling. We're controlling smooth muscle, so this is the organ muscle. We're controlling cardiac muscle, your heart, and we're controlling all the glands in your body, right? So think about adrenaline, think about your hormones, think about um, antidiuretic hormone, think about sweat, um, things like that. All right, so this parasympathetic division or sympathetic division are two states that your body can be in. So your body is, I'm, I'm betting right now, you're probably not too stressed. You're sitting around listening to my lecture um, at home <laughs> and you're probably in this parasympathetic division right now. Your body is relaxed and uh, this is known as the rest and digest mode or division. So when the fibers are active, when the autonomic nervous system is actively firing fibers in this system, you feel relaxed. So what does that mean for your body? Rest and digest. So that means that your smooth muscle cells, I'm sorry, smooth muscles in your digestive tract is actively working to digest your food because you're relaxed, you have the energy to put into digesting the food. Cardiac muscle is going to have a slow heart rate, right? Because you're relaxed, your heart rate's gonna go be at the lowest. And then the glands, right? So you're probably not gonna be secreting 
um, too much adrenaline right now. Your saliva will actually be putting out more output right now because you have the, the digest version of that will um, increase the saliva. So um, this mode of being is going to be this rest and digest, right? And this all comes into what stimuli are coming in. So your senses, your sensing your environment is very calm. You're sensing your environment is very peaceful. And so there's no reason for you to be in this in any other way than relaxed. So let's say things change, right? So let's say like there's an earthquake, God forbid, there's an earthquake that hits and all of a sudden your senses are, you know, heightened. You are going to have this new information come into your brain and then your body will start to shunt that the fibers that are active are going to go into the sympathetic division. So this is known as your fight or flight response. So when the fibers are active in this division, then it's going to be a very different response for your smooth muscles. So fight or flight means it's setting up your body to either fight something or run away from it, right? You have some kind of threat. So smooth muscle um, of your digestive tract will stop moving things around because we don't have time or the luxury to digest your food now. We need to put that energy into something else. Um, the cardiac muscle, your heart's going to increase its heart rate. Um, your breathing rate's going to go up right? Your glands, you might start sweating. Um, it, so you might start secreting adrenaline, right? So there are going to be a lot of opposite actions if your sympathetic fibers are, are firing. Okay. So basically you're either in the parasympathetic division or you are in the sympathetic division um, to control this automatic parts of your body. Okay. So I, I hope that makes sense. This is basically how, um, you know, your, the, you know, orientation or the, the uh, organization of your, your nervous system. So let's look at the Roman numeral two, where it says organization of the nervous system in your outline. So number one, I do mention the sensory or afferent signals, which is right here, right? These are the sensory signals. They require receptors to detect the environment and the receptors can be specialized to detect a specific stimulus. All right. And they're always going to, um, uh, carry information via the peripheral nervous system into your brain and spinal cord. Then the motor or efferent signals, number two, right, they're going to be carrying away from the central nervous system, again, through the through nerves, right, through the peripheral nervous system down to the effectors. And then I have number three and number four just um, outlining for you what is a somatic sense, so external to the body cavities again, and what is a visceral sense, these are organs inside your body cavities. And then I have some examples for you, like what's a visceral sense feeling that your bladder is full, right? Because it's the sense coming from your organ. What's a visceral motor signal? Ha, huh, right? So visceral motor, something that's going to the smooth muscle. So maybe your brain is telling your stomach to start churning because you just ate something and it's time to start um, tossing it around in your stomach. Um, it could also be maybe telling the smooth muscle of your bladder to contract. Um, so when you go to the bathroom, when you urinate, your bladder is actually pushing that urine out. So your smooth muscles contracting when you go to the bathroom. So that's a motor signal, visceral motor. What's a somatic sense, right? So anything coming from your skin and your muscles. So I have heat on the skin and what's somatic motor. Well, so look at your, what is the only thing that somatic uh, effector is going to be the skeletal muscle. So I have contracting your trapezius muscle in the outline. So hopefully those make sense to you. Um, let's see what's next on here. Okay, so I'm going to stop this section right here.